How's it going YouTube? This is Adam here with Coding Basics and I am here with your second tutorial in the Python programming language. Now last video, if you saw it, we uh, did the setup of Python. We then went on to, uh, I showed you um, how to use PowerShell or Terminal, uh, depending on which operating system you have, and then I uh, finished by just showing you how to launch Python. Well, in this tutorial, we are actually going to get into some Python coding. And I have a list here, I'll blow this up for you, of what we're going to do in this video. So today's tutorial is specifically uh, doing math in Python. Start by learning the basic math operators. Focus a little bit in on division. Then learn about the math library, uh, storing numbers and variables, and then finish by typecasting. So a lot to go through, so let's get started. I'm going to start by opening up PowerShell, and I'll blow this text up for you. Uh, that should do it. That way you guys can see better. So, we're going to start by launching Python. If you guys watched my last video, sure, I have Python installed properly, so we just type in Python to start it. And let's start by just the basic math operators that you learn in high school. So the first is uh, addition. Uh, you can type in any number and then uh, the plus symbol on your keyboard, another number, and it's going to split that out. Um, and you can do that with multiple numbers. So 9 plus 8 plus 7 plus 6. And it will spit out the answer you're looking for. Uh, next one is subtraction, of course. So 9 minus 8, you'll get 1. Pretty straightforward. Next is going to be multiplication. Um, so 9, and then you use the asterisk symbol, and then type in your second number. So if I do 9 times 4, or 5, sorry, type the right wrong number, uh, I'll end up with 45. And that's really your basic math operators. Now, a couple more fancier ones. Um, first is uh, the power or exponent. So I can do 9, two asterisks, and then a 5 this time. I'll get 9 to the power of 5. And actually, you'll be surprised how quick Python is. And it can do some pretty huge numbers really quickly. So I'm having 32. Uh, and then say to the power of uh, 10,000, for example. It does that in a fraction of a second, and like I don't even know anyone who could pronounce that number there. But somehow Python's able to do it. Alright, I'm going to exit out of Python quickly just so I can clear my screen. Alright, now I'm going to hold off on division for now, because there's a whole... I, Division's a little bit weird. That's all I'm going to say for now. It's a little weird in Python, so we will come back to that later. Now, the next thing I want to talk to you is it does follow bed mass Python. So if I did a 9 plus 8 times 4, it is going to evaluate the 8 times 4 first before it adds on the extra 9. So Python does follow bed mass. So I will get 41, because when you multiply 4 by 8, you get 32 plus 9, you get 41. But now if I use brackets, so 9 plus 8, and then multiply it by 4, I will get 68. So it does follow bed mass, which is just something useful to know. So we are actually going to move on to division now. now why did I say it was weird? Because when you do, for example, 9 divided by 4, you'd expect to get a decimal number, but you get 2. Why is that happening? It's just, it was an error. I don't know if I'd really call it an error, but it was, it was how, the, uh, how division was done in the older version of Python. So, they kept that in now because there were programmers who were used to using division this way, so they kept it in. But if we want to fix this, we're going to type in from underscore underscore future underscore underscore um, oops, I forgot a space after the M, so from underscore underscore future 
import division. Now, if I do 9 divided by 4, you will get the number you expected. So, this just means go to the, well, it's the new way of doing division, so I guess that's why it's called the future. You're just importing the new way of doing division, otherwise you'll get 2. Now we're going to go into a couple other things with division. First thing is called integer division. So, right now, uh, this decimal number here is what you call a floating point. So, an integer is just no decimal place. How you do that is you put in uh, two division symbols. So, dash dash, and then if I put in a four, I will get two. How you expect. And uh, the next thing is mod. So, mod is basically the remainder from like the integer division. So, since I'm left with two here, which is the answer you'd get when you did uh, 8 divided by um, 4. You'd get 2. Uh, since that's a 9, though, the remainder is 1. So if I did 9 mod, which is the uh, percent symbol, mod 4, I'm going to get a 1. It's basically the remainder that you're left with after integer division. So it's how m integer division is how many times you can go in and hold without a decimal place. And... Uh, mod is basically the remainder left on that. So those are all the important things about division that you need to know. Now, those are limited math operations. There's so much more you can do in Python. So now that we've done uh, the basic math operators and division, we're going to move on to the math library. So if you go into your web browser and search up math API Python, you'll see all these math functions and there is a bunch of them. So, how do you use the math library? You, just how we import a division here, you're going to type in import and then math. Now you have access to all these math functions. So, just to show you a couple that might be useful to you, math.ceiling for example. So, if I did math dot seal 2.6 what ceiling does in computer science and in math it rounds up to the nearest integer so 2.6 it's gonna round up to 3 the opposite of ceiling is floor so math dot floor and if I type in 2.6 this time it's gonna round down to the nearest integer which is 2 alright so Let's look at some other ones. Another useful one could be, um, let's see, the power one. That's one I used quite a bit. So, power. If you don't want to do uh, it that way, you can type in math.pow9, 4. So that's the uh, base, that's the exponent. And you'll end up with the same number. The difference is it'll be a floating point number instead of an integer. So, integer, no decimals, and floating point decimals. Uh, another one is square root. So, math.sqrt. Now, 144, it's going to say 12. There's another one. So, really, just go through here. If they explain exactly what they do. There's everything. So, you got up here your. Uh, number of representation functions, you have some power and logarithmic functions, some trigonometric, some trigonometric functions. Sorry, I can't talk tonight. And then you'll do some angular conversions, so degrees and radians. So, for example, if I want to know what... Oh, actually, I'll do radians. So if I wanted to know what 90 degrees was in radians, there, you can just type it in, and it will give it to me. And yeah, there's an endless amount of functions, and also, another thing I want to get to is constants. So to say I wanted to uh, uh, use like a, you know, uh, some sort of math formula that involves pi. So, example, one you'll probably know from math class, pi r squared. So if I had... If I typed in um, 3.14, 3.14, 3.14, 3.14, 3.14, 3.14, 3.14, 3.14, 3.14, 3.14, 3.14, 3.14, 3.14, 3.14, 3.14, 3.14, 3.14, 3.14, 3.
159. Those are the only digits of pi I remember. And just say I did that times the radius of my circle, which we'll just say is 4. And then I will square that. There you go. So there, there is the area of that circle. Uh, pi r squared it is area, if you didn't know. Now, the next step up for that would be, because that's that's not really pretty to look at, the next step up would be to ser, uh, save a variable by just giving it some name, so pi equals, and then typing in 3.14159. Then I could do pi times... And then we'll do the 4 again, and then we'll square that. And we get the same answer. The only thing is this isn't accurate. There's so many more decimals in pi. So that's where the math library comes in. It has a constant called math.pi. And then I can multiply that by the 4 squared. And we get a much more accurate area of that circle. So... I'm pretty sure that's all I want to talk about for this. Yep. Yeah. Same thing, there's E, which you learn. I didn't really learn about that in high school. Uh, e is more something you use in a university first year calculus, so I'm not sure if you know what that is. But another very useful constant. So that's the math library. The last thing is storing numbers and variables, which I kind of did here with the uh, pi right here. But, um,. Let's just go a little bit more into that. So basically, you can give a variable any name. So just I'm going to call this variable name and just say it's 1. Now, anytime I type in, it's going to give the value of that variable. Um, the number 1 is now associated with this variable name. Now, you can add to it. So name equals name plus 3 for example. Now if I type name, I'm going to get 4. So you can add to it. Another way if you want to just increment that number by uh, 1, I can do name plus equals 1. Or if I want to increment it by more, name plus equals 3. That'll work as well. So you can just kind of set an increment. These two lines would replace or this line here would replace this line here. A little bit cleaner. Now if I type out name, I added 1 to it since then, and I've added 3, so if I type in name, I will end up with 8. Now, you'll, you probably noticed up here, I did name plus plus. I was thinking about Java there. That's not something that's actually going to work. You will get an error. But um, in Java, that's how it works. You increment it by 1 when you type that in, but just forget about that. Alright, next thing is you can multiply two variables together. I guess that's another thing we can go over. So let's say name 2 equals 4. So name times name 2. And you end up multiplying the two of them together. So you can multiply multiple variables together. You can increment variables store numbers and all of these you will find very useful as we move on. Another thing worth noting is if you use the same variable name that will be overwritten. So right now name has a value of 8 but if I say name equals 1 I have now overwritten that variable so now if I type in name I will get 1. So that's one thing to be careful of make sure you know what you're naming your variables that can cause errors and it's really, really important to give them intelligent names. So, I had my first programming class I ever took in grade 10. Um, the guy just, you know, he would type in literally just gibberish just to give him a name. You want to give it something important. So, like example, pi, something that describes how, like, you know, what that variable is storing. All right, that's all I'm going to talk about about variables for now. And the final thing we're going to go over quickly is typecasting. What is typecasting? It's changing a variable type to another type. So, when we typed in math.pi, this is a floating point. It has a decimal. What if I wanted that to be an integer? What you do then, you type an int, and then in brackets, 
put that floating number. So we're going to put a math.py, and it's going to pop out a 3. So, for example, we could do, uh, let's just do, well, we'll create a new variable, equals int. And now that we have the new division imported, we're going to do 9 divided by 4. So now inside this name variable should be the number 2, which it is. We can also do the exact opposite. So if we wanted that to be a floating point, we can do name equals float, and then put in their name. And now we have a decimal point number inside of name. So that's all I want to talk to you for this tutorial. Those are the two main data types that we'll be using. Actually, I think the only two. In other languages, such as Java, there are other types of data types like doubles and bytes, chars, all sorts of other ones. But that's all we're going to talk about in this video. So thank you guys for watching. Please comment, thumbs up, and subscribe. It's really going to help me grow my channel. I really appreciate you guys watching this video, and I will see you in my next tutorial.